Mm. <laughs> yes. Yes, ma'am. All right. What is up, everyone? Jill here. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm in a coat this morning. Well, a light jacket, but I'm counting it. I don't know if you guys can hear, but it is raining. It's overcast. It's in the 60s. It is the perfect gloomy day and I'm so glad that I got out here yesterday and got so much done in the tunnel so that I can kind of shift into the home today but I wanted to share with you guys we have not come out into the tunnel and done any sort of garden tour um, I don't know if you guys are aware of this or not but we took the majority of the summer season off um, my husband Nathan and I are building a business right now from the ground up. It's an herbal supplement business catered specifically to women's health and that has just been a lot of work. And so unfortunately the farm had to take a little bit of a setback this season, but I am happy to say we are officially full steam ahead on the farm, full steam ahead on the new business and so it feels good but I have been really prioritizing the farm and my garden areas to make sure I'm rocking and rolling this fall and winter but also this coming spring and summer. So I have a lot of my brassicas planted out. I direct seeded this entire 48 foot long bed of root veggies yesterday and I'm still got a few more beds that we are mending getting ready to plant for that second and third succession of our fall and winter veggies but I wanted to take you guys around, share with you what we have going on in the high tunnel right now, and just give you a little glimpse into what my world's been like for the last few weeks. Oh my gosh, I am so excited. Oh, I don't know if you guys are feeling it, but I'm like, yes, I'm so pumped to share with you what I have. I'm going to attempt to remember the variety since we're not selling anything out of this tunnel. It's just for my family's consumption. I haven't been too particular about making sure I label things well. I do also have a few late summer things that are in the ground too that I think you guys are gonna be surprised at how well they're doing. So this bed over here was the one that I seeded yesterday. So I have, let's see. The way I kind of measure plantings are by these posts right here. So I've got from this post over back is the Bravo Daikon Radish. They're a big, purple, beautiful radish. Uh, they're a good storage radish as well. So I have about 300 planted in this area. Then I have the Boldor Beet, which is a beautiful yellow beet. I've got a baby beet, which is just a small little red. We'll use it for fermenting. Then here, I did another two uh, spacings. So actually from about this one, two down is the Napoli variety. And then I tried two new varieties. One's called a Nepal and the other one is a gold nugget. So the two new varieties were still hybrid varieties. Um, I grew a rainbow hybrid this past spring and it was okay I just wasn't crazy about the flavor so the gold nugget I did quite a bit of research and found that it tasted really nice and sweet especially after it has had a few frost under its belt so I thought we would try that and then the Naple is I believe that's a variety if not I'll put the correct one down here on the screen somewhere but it's also an orange variety and I just wanted to be able to compare it to the Napoli just to see am I really growing the best carrot that I can and it's just fun to kind of switch up varieties sometimes and check that out it might be in the 60s today but I do in fact have tomatoes in the tunnel they look great I started these in the house they looked really, really poor, so I went ahead and transplanted them out. I mended the bed well with asthmite, worm castings, feather mill, just added some good, rich nutrients into the soil, and they have popped up so nicely. You can see how beautiful their color is. So these are Romas, and then a corded blue, they're all paste varieties, and I think I had maybe one Grand Marshal over there, but for the most part, let's see, I've got two, four, six, eight of these. I'm just hoping to be able to make a little bit of sauce. I wasn't able to do a ton of that this summer, and so I'm just hoping to make up for lost time, but these are looking really good. 
fingers crossed we can get a yield before the frost. So our estimated first frost is sometime, I want to say it was like November 20 something. And usually if we do have a frost then it's super, super light. Nothing I'm really worried about. We don't start getting those heavy, heavy frosts until December usually. But here, <laughs> we are in the high tunnel, so we are protected to some degree. The bad thing about growing these fall uh, tomatoes is that there's no good way to put row covers on it, right? And you see here, I've got my cucumbers. So these are the Katrina cucumbers that I am growing again. Um, they're doing great. These are going to produce super, super quickly, so I'm not going to worry about that. The goal is just to go ahead and get a few harvests before it starts getting uh, super, super cold which is really going to start stunting them even though I can kind of trap some heat in here um, and with all these fall tomatoes these are determinate varieties so I do still have a string that I've run down for them um, but they're not going to grow very tall so a determinate variety is something that grows to a determined height and it's going to set all of its fruit versus an indeterminate variety which is a lot of what I grow in the summertime it's going to grow to an indeterminate amount and it's going to keep on setting fruit and the more you harvest the more it's going to produce so I like to do all my determinate varieties in the fall all my indeterminate varieties in the summer that way I can just kind of yield more and it's worked really well for us so I have no doubt that this is going to do fine but what I will do is as we're starting to get closer to those cooler temps when it's about two or three in the afternoon and it's peak hot I'm going to go ahead and roll the sides down probably and trap as much heat in here as I can to make sure that the soil temp stays warm um, throughout the night and make sure that some of these still heat loving plants do fine um, and so that's kind of just a system I have figured out that has worked pretty well for me. And over here, we have kind of interplanted a lot. You can see here, um, we've got Brussels sprouts down at the end, which is what I prefer. I have interplanted with some celery down the middle. And then up here towards the top, we just have some hybrid cabbage i do have chinese cabbage started now i have a tiara which is just a small little head cabbage it's a hybrid um, that will be going out into another bed and some red cabbage so for different kimchi and stuff and then i have my celery planted in the middle because it's going to grow tall stay pretty slender i gave it plenty enough space you can see here i actually planted the celery in between where my other two brassicas were planted so if it does bush out a little, we still have an ample amount of space. But these are all looking pretty good. They've taken to being transplanted well. And this bed's looking great. I did go ahead and add my wire hoops because I know um, I'm not going to need this for frost cover right away. But with my brassicas in particular, I've already got some damage on my seedlings. So what I'll do is I will spray them all with BT. I will go ahead and put an insect netting up, but I wanted to do this tour first to show you guys. So that's one of the projects today, is we'll go ahead and lay some insect netting down just to make sure um, we're keeping all of those caterpillars and bugs off of the brassicas. I forgot to show you all this, but in my cucumber bed, so you can see they're looking so good. I do have some Carmen pepper plants. We um, didn't trellis these this year. Instead, we've done kind of the corral method with the rebar, which I don't like. I don't recommend. It was just kind of a time issue. But you guys can see they're producing. We've been harvesting a lot of these for various dishes. So we're going to just keep this little bunch. I think it's like three plants, maybe two plants. We're just going to keep corralling it in with the rebar. We'll take some twine and go around it. But these Carmen peppers are my favorite. They produce a ton. You can harvest them when they're green or red. They get massive. So this is our little kind of just our summer bed <laughs> right here. So behind me here we have the Sugar Rush Peach Pepper. It is is pretty much dying off. I planted these pretty early, I feel like. So while they are still producing some peppers, the plants themselves don't look good. They're starting to yellow. So we've just been continuing to harvest a bunch, ferment as much as we can, but I will be ripping all of these out soon so that I can amend this bed 
and have this whole 48 foot long bed, which we will also be doing more brassicas in. So we'll have our cabbage, we've got more cauliflower. I have a lot of like purple broccoli, sprouting broccoli, things like that, that we'll need this entire bed to plant. So we'll start just being really intentional about harvesting, making sure all of this is harvested and amended before that second round of brassicas needs to go out. Can't wait to show you this, the ginger. We all know I love growing ginger because it is so easy. It's been so hands off. So let's see here. Oh, nothing like a random tray. But that was from an Ivy June. So you guys can see here, the ginger is looking really good. We'll be harvesting it pretty soon. I do like to just keep hilling it up so that it keeps growing. But the plants are starting to die off some, but overall these look really, really good. Um, we'll probably just account for more space next year for ginger. And I think I'm gonna attempt to do turmeric and see how it does. So I still haven't planted this part because I wanna be able to plant at the same maturity and take up a whole bed. So I'm waiting until we harvest the ginger before I can plant this out with crops that are, you know, going in at the same size and harvesting at the same size. Um, talking about pest damage, I told you guys. This is caterpillar damage, look at them. So what I do for that is BT. Once they happen, they just happen so quickly. I've got leaf back there. So I'll come in and do this today. These are all brassicas I started. This is all actually just broccoli. And I have a few different cauliflower varieties here. But I got this whole bed planted. At the front, we have an emperor broccoli. Just your typical green. It just grows really well for us here. Uh, the seeds came from Johnny's. So we've got a few there. Let's see what we, this is still emperor. Then we go into the graffiti cauliflower. This is that beautiful purple variety. And then after that, we have purple moon, which is again, another purple variety. We go into the clementine, which is kind of like a cheddar cauliflower. And then I think we end it out with the early snow. So the way I have it is broccoli, we have purple cauliflower, another purple cauliflower, we have orange, and then we have white. So I didn't grow a ton of the specialty varieties as far as the yellows and the purples because they don't do as well. This has kind of been my experience for the last several years I've traveled it. The plants grow slower, um, the heads aren't as uniform. So most of, you know, this will probably be the only bed I do with those fun, funky varieties. And when we plant over here, this will be a lot of that early snow, just things I know that are gonna produce super, super well but I need to get the rest of these little babies out. We were able to crank out a ton in this bed though. I think we did like 18 inch spacing. Went ahead and added the hoops for the insect netting uh, to combat against those caterpillars, but it looks pretty good. So it may not look like much right now, but we are slowly but surely getting food planted out, getting our beds prepped. I did utilize two beds out in the raised bed garden for more carrots. Um, I did the Viper variety, which were just long and slender. I'm gonna do those mainly for holiday cooking. Um, they're just so fun to roast whole with some honey and thyme. Also did a whole bunch of bush beans. I didn't wanna take up a whole bed and I knew the brassicas I would need to be in here long term. So those kind of short turnaround crops as far as the beans, I decided to put outside in the raised bed garden. But still this week, the biggest plan is to finish cleaning out this bed, amending it, and then we can't do anything until we harvest the ginger and then we'll be able to plant that bed. So I think I have enough things started right now. And then again, I've got everything on multiple successions. So we'll be doing three different successions of broccoli, cauliflower, we'll be doing two successions of cabbage. Um, and so it's really just kind of utilizing the space to the best of our abilities. And I'm excited, but I wanted to take a minute and share with you guys what we have growing in the tunnel, just to quick little check-in. It's been a minute since we've done this. I missed my little garden tours, although this garden tour didn't take very long. It sure is fun to share with you guys what we have going on. So cheers. Happy Tuesday. I hope you guys are beautiful today. I'll talk to you soon.